Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It's good to see all of you here today. I'm Lori D. Willis, the Chief Communications and Marketing Officer here at Bennett College. And again, we're glad to have you. Welcome to our esteemed institution. I am going to bring up Bennett College President, Dr. Phyllis Worthy Dawkins, who is going to introduce a very special guest. That guest will make an announcement. Following his announcement, we will have remarks by both Dr. Dawkins and our board chair, Senator Glad Dr. Gladish Ash Robinson, a 1971 Bennett alum. After that, we will open the floor for questions. We ask first and foremost that you put all of your phones on silent. Secondly, we ask that before you ask your questions, you identify yourself by name and news outlet affiliation. Again, thank you so much for coming and welcome to Bennett College. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this, we have a very, very special announcement this afternoon. We've been working on this project for a number of weeks now. And so I'd like to bring to the podium Mr. Mo Green from the Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dawkins. 
and uh, thank you for allowing me to have just a few moments to, to speak with you this afternoon. Again, my name is Maurice Green. I go by Mo. I'm the Executive Director for the Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation. For those of you who are not familiar with the Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation, it's an 80-year-plus-old foundation. Um, it's a private family foundation that is dedicated to improving the lives of all North Carolinians. Since 1936, the Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation has invested over $570 million into North Carolina. I am grateful to have this opportunity to stand before you today and announce that the trustees of the Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation voted to give Bennett College a gift of $500,000 to support its fundraising efforts as it seeks to work to raise a total of $5 million by early February of this year. The Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation has been a longtime supporter of education and seeks to promote efforts around racial and gender equity. Our support of Bennett College aligns well with our own values as an organization. As one of only two historically black uh, women's colleges in this country, we are blessed to have this treasure in North Carolina but even more fortunate to have it located here in the triad. It is critically important that we keep open the doors of a place that has provided women with high quality education for decades. Indeed, I can also speak about Bennett College from my own experience as a superintendent of Guilford County Schools. The school system had an amazing partnership with Bennett College. That partnership continues today. One of the significant partnerships that uh, the school system has with Bennett College is the early middle college uh, here at Bennett College, where the high school and the college educates young women and prepares them to be exceptional uh, students and adults. That school has had many years of 100% graduation rate, uh, many years of 90 plus percent and higher uh, college going rates, and was also recognized as a state and national school of character. And so Bennett College has opened its doors not only to college going women, but to young women before they even go to college. That is exceptional. It is my hope and the hope of the Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation that this gift of a half a million dollars will encourage others to give and give generously so that this college can raise enough funds by early January, early February to fully restore its accreditation and to continue to do the great work uh, for women, for generations to come. Thank you. On behalf of Bennett College, we accept this donation. We are thankful uh, to receive the gift of $500,000 towards the $5 million we need by February 1st. So today, as of today, we're up to about $2,700,000. And so with that, thank you. I want to introduce you to you, my board chair, Dr. Gladys Robinson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is certainly uh, a pleasure, uh, and it makes us so happy uh, to have our friend, Mo Green. Mo's been a friend of Bennett College a long time. And I certainly remember when he came to Guilford County from Charlotte, and we were so excited to have him in our great city and uh, really are excited about how he left the uh, county school system in such great shape and moved on to greater things. So we are so uh, just, just Excited. I'm excited. 
Uh, and we thank you. We thank you. We thank your trustees for investing in Bennett College and for knowing how valuable the education is. Uh, so, and some of those trustees we know. Uh, and, and so we are saying to the Greensboro community, certainly, that Z. Smith Reynolds, our friend, can support the education here. We know everybody else in Greensboro and around the state can, too. Can't they, Mo? Absolutely. They can do it. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we want to thank uh, Mo Green, and we want to thank our own president and her staff uh, for and our trustees for moving forward, and we've moved this needle forward, so we know Bennett's on a roll, and Bennett's going to do it. Yes. Uh, so there is no question. There is no question in our minds. Never has been, no. has there, Madam President? No. No. And we have no question uh, that Bennett will uh, keep its accreditation uh, in terms of SACs, uh, and we can get several others as well, too. So thank you so very much. Right. At this time, we'd like to open it up for questions. You are just a little over the halfway point, but time is very short. Mm -hmm. I wonder what makes you think that you will be successful. Ah, well, every day, every day, donations are coming in. And this morning, I was on the Tom Joyner show, and he encouraged his viewers, he, uh, at least 300,000 of the millions of viewers, of viewers he has, to give at least 5000 to, not 5000 $5. $5. Uh, <laughs> I wish it was 5000 $5 to $10. $10. If only 300000 was were to give $5 to $10, we will exceed the amount we have. And since that time, I went over to talk to my staff, and the money is coming in. So we are very confident, whether it's through small donations or the big donation we received from Z. Smith Reynolds today, we are going to make this go. Okay. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. I'm Alma with WFMY News 2. Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak to the other donation that you received today that was also half a million dollars? Yes, we were fortunate to be the first recipient of the Papa John's found new foundation under new CEO, Steve um, Ritchie. Uh, and so we have, to get them back to back, it's overwhelming. And so that's what brought us up from yesterday being at 1.7 to now being at $2.7 million. And I think the other piece too is that, say it right here, uh, both in terms of a corporation like Papa John's and our great foundation, Z. Mm -hmm. Smith Reynolds, certainly other foundations and corporations are going to step forward. They're already writing the check. Mm -hmm. So we, we know that people are out there who care about the education of these young women that you see in here. Mm -hmm. For those who may not have an uh, affiliation with the school, mm -hmm. could you tell us why? Why you think it's so important that Bennett stays open? Well, Bennett has been around for 146 years. Founded in 1873, became a women's college in 1926, and we're about educating women, strong women that, goes, that go out into the workplace, women that lead with a, a strength that we clothe them in. We clothe them in not only leadership and sisterhood that complements the degrees that they receive in STEM, business, education, humanities, and the social sciences. And so we prepare women of color to be a part of the education workforce in America and throughout the world. One of our students also answered your question about why. Okay. Um, good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ashley King. I'm a fresh woman, English major, political science minor from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. And my reason as to why Bennett College should stay open, because it's a safe haven for many of my Bennett sisters. I myself am not a talkative person. I like smaller classrooms and the relationships I have with my professors. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Africa Kors. I'm a junior social work major from Columbia, South Carolina. Bennett should stay open because we not only receive a prestigious education, but 
it's it's a close knit community, and we're when we're here, we're prepared to go out and navigate the world as women of color. Yeah, so thank, thank you. you. Would you like to add to that, Senator Robinson? You're a bell. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I graduated from Bennett in 1971. I'm so very proud of that. And I served as national president in 1982. So you can see I've been involved a long time and believe, and I've recruited students to come to Bennett. Uh, as a matter of fact, last night, my nephew called and said, Aunt Gladys, did you do this? And what he said is that their daughter, who's a sophomore, had just gotten a letter from Bennett asking her to go on the web and enter her uh, interests, et cetera. She's a very smart young woman, and they're very interested. So for women of color across this country, Bennett is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for them to just see their gifts and then to accentuate that and to move on into careers across the country and the world. So we know that many other young women like these two great young women mm -hmm. want to come to Bennett and should have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Naomi with WUNC, mm -hmm. um, you had said that you had gotten, that you were the first recipient of the Papa John's Foundation. Mm -hmm. Was there any hesitancy knowing their previous? No, no hesitancy. Uh, Papa John's uh, has new leadership. Uh, Steve Ritchie is the new CEO. Uh, and they, they have grounded themselves in promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, focusing on education and entrepreneurship and just building uh, support in the African-American community and among all the HBCUs. So we're the first, and we're happy we're the first. I have one question. Mm -hmm. Since you are Earl Jones, my other head friend for a time, mm -hmm. could one of you speak to the legacy of Bennett College as far as the impact it has nationally and internationally? Civil rights movement, Martin Luther King okay. speaking here in 1958, I believe. Yeah, 58. And also that the Bennett Bell, the students, were the primary strategists for the sit in movement. Actually, they got it started in the, uh, the Greensboro Four, attended the third or fourth meeting. Could you, could you speak to that legacy since we have Black History Month? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. And I think Earl Jones could tell that story himself. Uh, but you, some of you don't know that even prior to the sit-ins, in 1930, in the 1930s, Bennett women with their gloves and hats and all actually went down to integrate the old Carolina Theater. And some of you may not know that was on Elm Street during that time uh, because we as African Americans had to sit in the balcony. So their aggressiveness in terms of our rights started a long time ago. And even with the 1960s, the sit-ins with A&T, uh, a lot of those Aggies will tell you that it was the women who sat with them and who discussed strategy in terms of how should they uh, approach Woolworths and begin the sit-ins. So our Bennett Bells have been involved the whole time, even through Dr. Player, our, our president, mm -hmm. taking materials to them in jail and making sure they did their homework there, but supporting them. So women at Bennett have been involved for a very long time in the civil rights of our country. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if this uh, moment, while it certainly wasn't something you would plan or hope for, mm -hmm. if you were successful in achieving your goal the remaining open, <coughs> is there a plus side? You're getting more media attention now than you would have gotten otherwise. Mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if you see something of a benefit coming out of that in the future. Yes. So the once we get past February 1st, once we raise the $5 million that we will raise, once we get past the appeal process on February 18th, uh, then the Board of Trustees has put together a committee to re-engineer Bennett College. And to that extent, I'm going to let the Board Chair talk about that. <laughs> okay, well, first I want to again thank the President and her staff 
uh, because, and we've worked closely together. We've That's been right. in and out of town. We've been everywhere, uh, hitting the road, not sleeping, et cetera. So I want to certainly thank them for the efforts because uh, it won't be once we do, we know we will. And we want to thank Mo again for just putting that energy in there so we can move ahead. And so we do have plans. We have plans. We know that Bennett will not return to this place again in terms of a deficit. And so the board has said, and you have said as a community, you got to do something different. And so we've established a reengineering committee that has been approved by our board of trustees. And it has people of notable reputations like Tom Ross, who is a former president of the UNC system, Martin Eats, who is the CEO of Self Help, uh, some of our own alums, Dr. Bernadette Watts, who is a former professor at North Carolina State. Uh, and, and a lot of other people on there who bring value. Uh, and they will begin to look at the whole educational arena. Mo, we probably need somebody from your place too. But anyway, they'll look at the future of education, mm -hmm. especially for women of color. Mm -hmm. And talk about the academic offerings, talking about how do we restructure? Uh, what do we need in terms of support? And so we expect that committee to be ready to report to our Board of Trustees uh, by June. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm certain by the time we have our retreat this summer coming that we will have some new information uh, for you as a community. Mm -hmm. I would just like to add to that. In the meantime, we also uh, have just recently approved a new strategic plan called Innovate 2022, where we're focusing on integrating technology, not only through the academic programs, but through the entire workforce and how we operate uh, in our organizational structure. Uh, so we're getting ready for the future. We've already identified new programs in cybersecurity, health sciences, technology, uh, birth through kindergarten and other areas uh, based on market-driven studies that we have conducted over the last two years. Any other questions? Why five million as the yeah. mark? Why not three million or four million or lower than that? Five million. <laughs> five million is what we need to support our appeal. We have to have additional resources and the five million cannot be restricted to scholarships it cannot be for facilities. It really needs to be $5 million cash reserve in the bank to support our appeal. Um, and that's based on a complicated calculation that SACS used to measure fiscal stability. We were called on, on only one standard. There are about 90 to 95 standards that we have to comply with in our compliance report for SACS. We were only called on one and that one is called financial resources. So to that extent, the standard, the sanction says we can produce or uh, introduce only additional financial resources to support our appeal. So that's how we got it at 5 million. Yes, go ahead. Bethany Chagan, WFDD. Uh, you've mentioned that your hope included in this strategic plan is to increase enrollment. What mm -hmm. do some of those recruitment activities look like? Right. Good question. I'm glad you asked that. Um, this fall, uh, we already have accepted uh, 4,000 students and the applications are increasing for the fall, for fall 2019. The applications are increasing. They're coming in every day. I think the additional media attention uh, has increased the number of applicants. Uh, we've had over 80% of the students, maybe even close to 90% of the students to return uh, this semester. So the students b still believe in us. Many of them are in this room today, my JMS students, my journalism and media studies students over here in the corner. And so many students have returned. 
And last year, we witnessed a 16% increase in enrollment overall, a 36% increase in the number of new students with an average GPA of 3.2 with our incoming freshman class. So we are pleased that students are still interested and students of color are still coming to Bennett College. We want to let you, the media, and the community know that on Saturday, this Saturday at 2 p.m., in the Global Learning Center down the hall, Dr. William Barber, uh, who was our former state president of the NAACP, and his daughter, Dr. Sherelle Barber, who is a graduate of Bennett College and now is a professor, uh, will be in an interchange, a conversation talking about, one, the value of Bennett College and certainly the value of educating women of color. So we want you, the media and the community to know about that discussion is free and open to the public. It's at 2 p.m. on Saturday, and we hope that uh, the public will come and participate. Okay. So before we close out, I just want to say one more time, I want to thank Z. Smith Reynolds for the donation today. Thank you. <laughs> Mo Green for working on our behalf. As uh, Chair Robinson said, Mo Green has been a friend at Bennett College for a number of years and a friend to Gifford County School, Schools for a number of years as well. So thank you for coming out today.